good morning, one and all. We're here. Maybe I should turn on the live stream. That would be a good idea. Let's stand together and start in our worship with Scripture. You know, all I always ask, who's not led this part of the worship service before? Anybody that would lead us today that never did? Candace, I know this is out of your uh, comfort zone. I like it. Right. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your minds. That by testing you may discern what is the will of God. What is good and acceptable and perfect. And I would say to that, let's take that into our hearts because we are to live within God's will and live by his will and be more and more like him each and every day instead of wanting to focus on what our will is because that's kind of what we do, isn't it? It really is. I hate to tell you, but it's true. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for calling us into this place. You know and we need to admit that if left to our own devices, we would not be here worshiping you because we are too busy worshiping ourselves. We are humans. We are sinful. We have a need to repent. Thank you, Lord, for putting it into our hearts to do so. Thank you for getting us here today and be with those that are still on their way. I've received texts from some already who are on their way. Keep all the tires on the road. Keep them safe as they come. And Lord, as we enter into worship today, let us remember why we're here. And there's no better way to proclaim that belief we have together than to say, as a church family, the Lord's Prayer. Let's say it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Stay standing. I believe Amanda's going to lead us into a song right now. <coughs> Good morning.
prayer needs, our praises, and all that. So, if you have a need you'd like the church to lift up today, we have a list in the back of a very full bulletin today. But who do we need to pray for? Kenzie. Prayers for the family of Jennifer Stucker that Kenzie just put on the list a couple weeks back, and here she is, and that was put in the hospice and has passed away. Keep praying for the family. Keep praying for the kids. Keep praying for the, the deceased's mother. Everyone who knew and loved Jennifer Stucker. Who else today? Ron. Yeah, uh, there's a pastor I used to work with in the sales. I went to uh, a reunion yesterday. And his son was like 50 years old. He had terminal cancer. Also, he had one of his in the hospital. He is in the hospital or is coming home from the hospital? No, he's still there. He's still there, okay. Yeah. Tim, as you all remember, has procedures every week, doesn't he? Right. He has procedures every week, right? He's had 20 surgeries since he's been there. 20 surgeries since he's been there, mostly to try to correct uh, things that shouldn't have happened. <laughs> Teresa's on today, so prayers for Tim and Teresa. Victor, part four, what do you have? Tooth cap? Wow. So did it come up in, into your sandwich? Yeah, it was under my sandwich. Oh, man. So a Jersey Mike's sub has claimed his tooth cap, so we got to get that fixed. And that's a big deal because, you know, that could be painful. So Victor Ford lost his tooth cap. Who else? Harriet, are there any online today that have asked for prayers? I know we always have, like you said, Teresa was online, but has anybody specifically said, let's pray for this? No, I did not see that. Okay. I see a car pulling in right now. Aha, Sheila, thank you. Wayne, we have it. We'll start it tomorrow, early in the morning. Hopefully, we outpatient. Outpatient, hopefully? Where do you have to go? Okay. Okay. Early morning. All right. Susie? You take me and Barbara blow your off. Okay. And me too. Who said me too? I'll let her come off now. We were going to have that board meeting today to vote on that time. It yeah. seems like it's happening early. Okay. That's good. Been a lot of ups and downs with this case. Okay. Susie, how's Braylon? She done okay? Braylon? Yeah, she was sick earlier in the week. Yeah. Yeah, they're at Mammoth Cave this week. Oh, oh okay. Well, I, I, across my mind, was there something going on more than that, but, you know, Trace was saying that she was out. He was concerned she about her. Yeah. Okay. Good bet. Okay, good. Yeah. I told her to be off park at them horses in that cave, but I guess they're going to try. Any others today to bring up? Casey. Mr. Dean, Regina, I was up the bank uh, this year today and had some little aberrant habits and issues and really want to get back to church. So. Yeah. And she's on our list and needs to stay on our list. And yes, so if you happen to see Regina in the community, especially at one of the banks, then just, just love on her. She's got plenty that she's gone through and still going through. 
Susie. He's at Christy Osborne also. Okay, good. And you all, it says at the bottom of the page, keep us up to date, going over it. If you've got your people on there, you're like, oh, well, she doesn't need to be prayed for anymore. She's good. Then let's fix that. Harriet, I see one name you need to update on, Debbie Mitchum, our friend. And I know you updated on Wednesday night. But... Yeah, she, uh, I'll, I'll see her this week. Uh, but uh, she had a PET scan Thursday, you know, looked for hot spots. She had, that originally was going to be a lumpectomy and radiation be done. And then they found more things, thoracic, they wanted to see a thoracic surgeon. And now they uh, saw something in the CT scan. They think she might have sarcoidosis. Uh, and now the pet scan. So she needs lots of prayers. Yes. I ran into Marvin this week too, her husband, and it's it's a lot. And it's it's taking its toll emotionally slash mentally as well on Debbie, of course, and Marvin, just because. It's a lot. Thinking ahead to communion time. Others for prayer needs or praises. I know we've got one of our youngins here today, our, our fourth row, row boys, one, two, three, four. Actually, they're the sixth row. It's so weird. You all do remember we do not have assigned seats in this church, okay? Even though they were made fun of mercilessly by Alvarado Road Shoulder sitting on the fourth row. RJ's got a uh, wrist thingy on, and you all know he and, and his friend Anna both were dealing with COVID a couple weeks ago, but now he's fallen really hard as a soccer player for our Henry County Wildcats on his wrist. So don't shake him too hard. Okay. And I know that uh, Reagan is dealing with injury, too, as guard for our Henry County Wildcats football team. So even though they're young, they're fragile, okay? So treat them good and keep them in your prayers. I'm glad they're here today. Any others today? Unspoken. Unspoken. There are. I've got you here. We keep unspoken on the bottom, and it covers a lot of bases. Let's go into prayer time now. We'll have a little quiet time that we can reflect individually and then we'll close us with a corporate prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for opening up the conduit of prayer. We do not have to go through a priest or a saint or a preacher or anyone else. We talk directly to you. Put it in our hearts to do that each and every day. We thank you for several people coming off the list today. Susie right here and Barbara. Boyer, Christy Ogburn, David Piles. Let's keep people coming off the list because they're doing well. Prayers today for a 50-year-old uh, with the son of a minister friend of Ron's from way back who has terminal cancer. Pray that Victor, little Victor, he's pretty big, but he's still little Victor, can do okay with the missing tooth cap, but that can be rectified and fixed before he has much pain. Prayers for Regina Piles. She's gone through so much and we miss her when she's unable to be here and she wants to be with us. Prayers for Tim Pointer. He and Teresa have been joining us online during worship, and that is a praise God for sure. But we'd love to see them in person because I know they'd like to get out of that place. They've been there way too long. Prayers for Wayne McAllister, a surgery hopefully outpatient, less than 24 hours away. Be with Wayne. Wayne's been through so much. and He's such a gentle, godly man, and we love Wayne. And keep him getting better, keep him getting healthier. Prayers for the family of Jennifer Stucker. Gone far too soon. Gone in a flash now after just being lifted up to the prayer list. Lord, we pray for Diane coming off the prayer list. We hope that's a good idea and that she just moves right forward. And it gets better and better all the time and feels better and better and can do more and more things that she loves to do as herself. And Lord, today we do lift up unspoken prayer needs. There are always very tender, very serious prayer needs that are hard to discuss, <coughs> hard to air in the open. But they are just as legitimate. Hear our prayers, Lord, 
In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Yes, sir. She did. Uh, we spent some good time with Frankie yesterday. She's she's okay, but after falling, you know, threshold between the bathroom and kitchen, we all do it. So she banged up her knee and she's fine, but just sore. Pray for this. We need to pray for the sale of her house. She wants to be living a couple hundred yards away at assisted living where she can have her independence yet not have such a gargantuan task of dealing with her beautiful historic home all the time. So let's pray that that house gets sold. And her realtor and her lawyer both have said houses just aren't moving right now pre-election. They are not moving. Doesn't matter what kind of house it is. And her house is a, a lovely historic home that not everybody's going to be in the market for. All right, celebrations. Mr. Ron Banta, are we singing for anybody today? Yeah, we've got one or two to say for today, but uh, I think we've got three birthdays. We've got Wayne here, he's got a birthday. Uh, Jake, looks like. Our other birthdays are not here, we'll have to save them. They're not here, don't I know that Brandon really especially wants us to wait for Ashley to be here to be signed for because he's been specific about that. <laughs> we'll do it up real good. And uh, we'll have uh, John when the records are here too, right? Yeah. So do we have any other birthdays other than Mr. Wayne McAllister? Is your birthday's today, isn't it? Hey, that's today. We get to sing to Wayne by himself. We get to sing to Wayne, and yeah, we got we got the two uh, wedding we're going to sing for. Yes, we do. It's not an anniversary. They've been married zero years. It is a countdown, six days. So. I guess we won't sing. No, we'll, we'll, we'll just wait. We'll celebrate, and hopefully we can. Hopefully, y'all can see a picture or two. So we're gonna sing for Wayne. Yeah, let's we'll sing for Wayne. Everybody All right. get ready. Let's celebrate. Happy birthday to. And I, I'll tell you one big one that I want to have right now is that it's time. We have run out of church directories to the point that I don't even have one anymore. And we're making a new one. This is rough. I've got everything from last year of everybody that's still part of our church, as well as listings of our new people. Most of them don't have a picture. And it'll say photo please with a little image that says that now look at your spot in here check your phone number check your mailing address check your birthday your anniversary make sure I didn't spell your name wrong get it all right and if you see your picture and you're like oh my goodness not that one please circle it put new picture please and text or email me or Harriet and it will get in there okay I don't want to embarrass you most of the pictures you picked yourself, but not every one of them, but let's get it right. And just make sure, if you are not on this list, because you've not joined the church, you're so brand spanking new that you're not even on this, then you can write it on the back, okay? But most of you that have joined the church, you at least have an entry, like here's Eli's, and it has question mark, question mark, question mark, because I don't have his address, and I told him that. I do have his, uh, I won't put the high school kids' phone numbers in here. I don't think that's a great idea, to have our kids' phone numbers, but... I got his birthday's April 3rd, right? So, and I've got RJ's birthday. But I, I need mailing addresses. We do have a card fairy that sends out birthday cards. So, they need to know it. So, I'm going to pass this around right now. This can go during the entire service. Be sure it doesn't stop on a table back there by Troy or in the nursery area or in the future bathroom and all that. Just fill it out. Keep it going so that... Um, we can get it published soon. Last fall, we published it in like October, November, and that'll be about what we do here. I'd say it was going to take probably a month to get it fixed up. So things happening this week, let me um, just quickly go through, and then I know we have some major updates on our building project. If you see during this week on the 18th, we have a Awana plus our meal plus our Bible study. Andrea, what do you want to say about Awana, if anything?
And I can say, uh, as a retired public school art teacher, I went through, I had the biggest budget in the school because everything's consumable. So everything that Andrea's kids use, all the TNT, Sparks, and Cubbies, we go through it. Markers don't last forever. Glue sticks, they're basically gone. Everything. Asper. Asper. I know that on your paper up here I see, Andrea, that Kiefer and Alexis are signed up to lead games this week. And I don't think you have any subs lined up for this week. Yeah, so if you feel it in your heart that you're like, you know, I don't mind being a substitute teacher for Awana, let Andrea know. Her clipboard's up here right by Amanda, and it's fine. You can be part of that for sure. Um, we were missing a couple of kids this past Wednesday that had a good pile of them. We had uh, 42 people here. It was a crowded fellowship hall and a good time. Bible study was good too. Zephaniah chapter 2, be part of that. Uh, today we have softball. After worship at 2.30, I know there's a board meeting. Cindy, anything you want to say about the board meeting other than we're having it? We're having a board meeting right after church and the fellowship hall. Yep. <laughs> Elders are always invited. The nine board members are invited, and hopefully we'll all be here. And business to discuss. Our ball game's at 2.30. The first game's at 1.30, but they're going to start without us, and we play at 2.30. So we'll wrap it up, I sure hope and pray, before that. I don't think we have a ton. So anyway. Board meeting is every six weeks, and we'll schedule the next one. We had our DC class start on Thursday nights. It was great. I should have put the picture up there. We have seven students in that class. Um, it's a very intense study, and those of you that are in it can probably say amen to that. It's a lot of work, but they've committed to do it. Um, I see up on the screen as well a picture of the signs by Kelly. Cindy, you have your clipboard about the guy to make their choice. Another clipboard. Clipboard Christian Church that meets in Greenwich Springs, Kentucky. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, two things. I've been saying we're going to brown bag the lunch, but we have until 1.45. So if you don't want to brown bag your lunch, you want to go somewhere, go home, whatever, it don't work for me to go home, I'll brown bag. I'm going to make this bigger. Keep talking. Um, you know what I'm doing. The date. Okay. So that's up to you. Just be back here by 1.45 to start the paint party. And the other thing, oh, $35 cash for Kelly. And you pay her that day. So you have six choices. They're right here. What I need you to do, and we need to go to the back, but I need you to write your name and the number of your choice. She orders these. I have to have all this information by next Sunday. She orders these special for this party. She doesn't have a stock of this stuff, so somebody cuts it for her. So anyways, um, don't let this one stop. It will go around again next Sunday. And that's it, isn't it, next that's Sunday? That's it. I've got two Sundays, and i got to get this information to her next Sunday afternoon. So. And Cindy, did you say pretty much if something comes up, we can just pay $35 and take your kid home and yes. you on your own? Yeah, because this is a spec, you know, she orders the exact right. amount she needs for this guy to cut, and she's going to get stuck with it. Right. She may use it eventually, but it's going to sit for a while. So we need to paint her whether we get to paint or not. You can buy the acrylics at Walmart and do it at home if you need to. Yeah. Next thing to discuss, uh, Stephanie, the cookbook. Yep, sure thing. Okay. I've got it, and I'll just put it in there. Okay. And then a note on that is make sure you put in honor, in honor of, if you want me to know, take that Ooh, I love that part. Yes. Yeah, because a lot of our historic recipes are the best part. Did you get those or what was your Did you get them off the clipboard? There were like six of them on that clipboard back where Troy sits that have been brought in. Well, there have been more. So you check that clipboard right where Troy sits. There's at least five or six on it. That are filled out. They're turned the opposite direction from the blank papers. All right, so go ahead. Oh, yes, so the trunk retreat is happening in mid October with a rain date or weather date, and we need to collect the candy.
So she needs lots of candy. She needs probably at least one more volunteer to sit with her. 18th and 25th. You know, the 18th will be the day unless it's rained out, then it'll turn into the 25th, and it's well over a thousand people go through that. So it, it's it's really good. It's a good opportunity to put scripture in somebody's hand. Love it. Um, looking at other things coming up, Wanda. Two weeks. We're going to your house, aren't we? <laughs> There's other things to talk about, right? Uh, well, it's the 28th, and it's going to be fun if uh, everybody wants to come. That's fine. If you want to bring something, fine. If you don't want to bring something, fine. It's going to be simple, hot dogs, chili, you know, stuff like that. We'll have a hay ride around. And I'm sorry to say that the deer ate my biggest part of the pumpkins, but too late. But I did pick what was left, and I think I got 48, but they were even eating green. Then, you know, so out of 22 rolls, I got 48. Right. Anyway, we'll have pumpkins, so that'd be fine. Are those for the adults or the kids? Kids first, but it's kids. Yes, kids first, and then. What time is it? It's at one o'clock. One o'clock on the 28th. Go away. Can I come late? We have several people that can't be there till yeah. two or three or. We're gonna eat all day long. So oh, it's no big deal. Okay. If you've been to Wanda, she puts on a pretty good feed. She and Mike. I don't have a clipboard. I'm furnishing the hot dogs and the chili and the stuff like that. If you want to bring something, do it. And I got the drinks. Yeah. And I'll be there at one o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.
All right, so as announcements happened, I kept thinking, okay, I gotta get Cindy. All right, I gotta get Stephanie. All right, I gotta get Wanda. And I forgot Casey has like a gargantuan thing. We're talking about what what's going on with the yard out there, Casey? Do you have a big enough map or do you need a microphone? Uh, I can be loud. All right, get loud and proud. Okay, basically our plumbers, the owner that I've met with a couple times, sent his guys out to get our drainage taken care of, and uh, there was miscommunication between them. Instead of taking a right at Albuquerque, they took a left and went up this way too far in front of the Fellowship Hall where we intend to build and expand that. So they're going to come back at no cost of us uh, and take it out about another 10, 15 feet to allow for that. Uh, obviously this mess here, after it's settled in, they'll push that back down and flatten that out and clean it up and get that good to go. So uh, sometime next week I'd say we should have all of our drainage complete. I know the rough end on the plumbing is 90% complete, they've got their bending out, so we're right there where we're ready to get an inspection and uh, be able to cover up these walls and so much land and hopefully have a bathroom real soon. So, that's cool. It's probably going to take us this far enough to where it starts to be full of weather where we may not or may. I'm not rolling it out completely, uh, but it's going to be later. We're probably honestly looking maybe the first year before moving forward with that. Any questions you ever have for anyone about any of the construction, transparency is number one. Ask any board member. The real point people on the construction have been Casey and Troy, because they have been meeting with them. I know Terry's been part of those meetings as one of our co-trustees. And if you have any questions about the drainage or about the health department coming and telling us what we have to do or not do, or about the plumbing job, interior or exterior, or about phase two on the fellowship hall, do not hesitate to ask. And I'd say ask me too, I know some things about what's happened, but I don't know how to answer the technical questions. But anything you want to know, we'll point you in the right direction. I'm excited. We told Frankie yesterday in her house, can't wait till we have to buy that giant ribbon to put on that door for that bathroom. And she says, oh, I'm ready. <laughs> we got to get a big shiny pair of scissors and a big old fat ribbon. I don't know what color ladies are going to pick for that. But I'm ready, so let's get it, okay? Any questions, you have it. We have a board meeting today. I'm sure it'll be a bit of a topic. Right now, we're going to Holy Communion. We had our first steps class earlier and talking about what's this mean? And I'm going to ask her. I'm going to put her on the spot. Penelope, what's that cracker mean we talked about? Did you hear that young woman of seven? The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. You want part of that? The answer is yes, you do. Okay. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we celebrate that. We remember that each and every week. I know not every church does, but for whatever reason, 160 years ago, our church says we will, and we do. Take of that meal today in preparation. We will have a hymn, ladies.
Tori put out a, a sermon this week from Alistair Bay. I had to listen to it. It was pretty hard hitting. All uh, something he doesn't normally do right before communion is to have a little mini sermon. And it was talking about uh, Matthew 5, uh, 23 and 24, as far as forgiveness. You know, um, part of what we do communion for is for to celebrate the forgiveness that we've been given through life and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that passage tells us that we should also, before we come to the altar, to forgive our brother, to forgive our sister, and to let these things that are on our heart, to let them go and give them over to God. So, we could, I'd ask you to bow your heads and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come here to your table, let's take this opportunity before we do to clear our minds and clear our hearts of any mouse we have towards anything. And just be here, stand here with tears you would have us in this moment with a clear mind and a clear heart and a long for you. And it's through the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Our spot for our tithes and offerings is near the door on the little table, historic table. If you're joining us online today, and I know several have, you may send your tithes or offerings to Drennan Christian Church, 
P.O. Box 495, Newcastle, Kentucky, 40050. Let's now stand together to sing the doxology. <coughs> We have a great way of wanting to be self-reliant. 
That can be good. Independent. That can be good. Take pride in your work. That can be good. But sometimes that's to the point that we, again, worship ourselves. Now, I want people in our church and our society and in our community to pull up their own bootstraps and work hard for a living and be independent as much as possible. But we are a group of people, Christ followers, Christians, that should not be thinking about ourselves. We should be thinking about Him first and foremost. You know the word joy, J-O-Y. Jesus at the top. O for others. Next. Finally, Y for yourself at the bottom. That should be your last consideration. And part of that is we are part of one body. And we are not, when we are not acting that way, we fracture, we splinter, we spiral. So we are a body of Christ. If you look at this church that has more people in it right now than we've ever been around, there's a lot of different parts to this body. And if you look around the room, or even from online look around the room, I'll just do that. You can see lots of different types of talents. You know, we have people here who are really good at musically type things. We have people that are great with the kids. We have people that are really good at leadership. We have people that are silly enough, I mean wonderful enough to serve on a board. Or teach a class. Or host an event. We have people that are fantastic at giving you advice. We have people that you know are in the Bible. And you can go to them because you know they've read it. We have people that have the experience of serving in leadership capacities in church, whether it's this church or another church or several churches over the period of their life. We've got a lot of different parts of this body. Now, since our last baptism day that some of you in this room were baptized, in fact, several of you in this room were baptized about a month ago, I've been preaching about what it means to be part of a church, to be a member of a church, what we believe, what it means, and just the big why. Why are we here? Now, part of that is I did reinstitute for the second time this year the First Steps class, and it's been small but mighty. We've had a really good time with discussions about what it means to be a church member. And standing up here the last few weeks, let me remind you, especially if you've not been here, a few weeks ago I talked about Jesus' return. This is near the end of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We talk about he's coming back. Coincidentally or not, of course not, that was my reading this morning. You know, in the, the bulletin that I put out each week about let's read some New Testament, let's read some Old Testament. I was reading that part about that twinkling of an eye. Felt good to read that because here's another mention of it. I spoke a couple weeks ago about believing the Bible. And what's in this book, do you buy it? Do you believe it? Do you live by it? Is this who you are? Even though there's pages in this book that used to describe the way you are not. That maybe you were flying in the face of this book. Maybe you were defiantly disagreeing with this book. But now... You are a new creation in Christ, and this book is what you want to live by. Then last week, I spoke about praying and praying humbly. Remember, I pulled that shroud thing over my head because we're supposed to pray quietly and humbly and not make a show of it and also not say babbling things that make no sense, but just talk right to our Creator and pray humbly to Him. And now I want to talk about being part of the body. Now, when I say the body of Christ, I don't just mean this body of Christ. This is the one we're part of. But I know that for many of you, myself and my wife included, we do things with people from other churches too. And we want to build up those churches too. You know, when we talk about Emmaus or the RAC prison ministry, those are people from everywhere. And we do things in their churches sometimes. And we want to know what's going on in their churches and build it up. Some of you have dear friends and family in churches around this county. And you are just as interested in what's going on with their churches, with our church. And I encourage that. It's not just about Trinity. Maybe you, in fact, have encouraged someone to go to a church that's not Trinity because it's closer to them. Or the size might be better for them. 
or they might know more people there. And if that church is preaching the Bible and you feel good and confident about that, then send them to that church. Now, do we have room for them here? Yeah. We don't have as much room as we used to, but we do have room. But if it's all about just this church, then we're not serving Jesus, are we? We're just trying to serve ourselves for whatever terrible reason. God tells us in Paul's letter to the Romans just about everything we could ever need to know about serving him in a church. And here we have a snippet about how we should estimate ourselves as part of the body. Listen to God's word, six verses of it. Romans chapter 12, verses 3 through 8. You've heard Romans 12, 1 and 2 a lot. It's about making your body a living sacrifice. I preached on that earlier this year. These words are right after that, right after the let your body be a living sacrifice. We talk about this. And it says, for by the grace given to me, Paul, I say to everyone among you not to think of himself or herself more highly than he ought to think. Now, I just got through saying to you about five minutes ago that we live in a society of self-worship. We do. If you don't like me saying it, I'm sorry. I'm going to keep saying it. We are in a society that we worship ourselves. We look at our own interests first and second and last, where we should be looking at Jesus, others, maybe get around to think about ourselves. Don't think of yourself more highly than you ought. And it says, but to think with Sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Now this is getting into deep stuff here. When you think about God has assigned your level of faith. Now I know, again, in our way of looking at ourselves independently and wanting to be all about what we think, we don't give God enough credit for being the one that goes ahead of us. We talk about in Emmaus about that prevenient grace, the way that God goes out ahead of us before we know it's happening and draws us in and pulls us in and is in control. And it says right there, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Now, if you think about, again, this room that I panned around with the camera, you know there's different levels of faith in this room. Isn't that great? Because what that means is we don't have everybody has come to Jesus at the same exact moment. Years and years ago, there's new people there's people in this room that haven't even joined our church, and they may not. Or they may. We have people in this room that we baptized five minutes ago, practically. There they are. We got some that we baptized ten minutes ago. There they are. We got some that were baptized before I was born. Praise God. We have all different levels of faith, and God's hand is on that. He says, with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith God has assigned, for as in one body we have many members, and think about your body, our bodies are different, aren't they? Some of our bodies are in tip-top shape, and some of us, the rest of us, they're not, okay? And they're different. Some of you might have real strong legs. Some of you might have real strong arms or shoulders. Some of you might have a really, really strong brain. Some of you have a really strong back for the type of work you've had to do. Some of you have injuries right now. We brought some of that up with some of our young athletes. They're young, but their bodies are injured right now. That's all right. As far as they have the different members, the members do not all have the same function. Now think of that. Our body parts have different functions. The people in our body of Christ also have different functions. Is everybody here supposed to do the exact same thing? Heavens, no. We have some people here that are great evangelists. They go out and drag people in. I heard one mention this morning. Somebody said, yeah, that person, they're the reason we're here. Looking around the room right now, I see some of you that impacted this church by inviting people in. That's being an evangelist, but also it doesn't stop there. Do we have people in this room that are good at discipling people, that taking them from, all right, they're in the church. Now what? Do we have people that are good at that? The now what? Yeah, we do. We got some people here that I would want to call them and say, can you come alongside her or come alongside him and rub some of that Jesus off on them with some discipline, with some putting your life into them in a way that they want. 
So it says here, so we though many are one body in Christ and individually members of one of the another. So we're one body of Christ that happens to meet at Drennan, but each of us is an important part of that body. I said to one of you during the fellowship time that somebody that has come because of you is not here today. Would you reach out to them? Because you're the one that should reach out to them. Not me. You're the one with the real solid relationship. They're in this building because of you. So see where they are today. Because you have that relationship. I don't. The middle of the screen says, Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. Again, there's God's hand right there. It says, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. So God has given that grace, right? This isn't saying using the gifts you have because you have grown them yourself. Does it say that? No. It says these gifts are because of the grace of God putting those gifts in you. Now that's a wild concept again because here in America we want to be all about I've done this myself, I'm independent, I've pulled up my own bootstraps. And again, those are good things. But we have to acknowledge who is the creator, who is the father, who has spiritually given to us who we are according to the grace given to us. And here's some of those gifts. If prophecy in proportion to our faith. So if someone can speak the word of God and be trusted to interpret the word of God, well, that's going to be going, done in proportion to their faith. That's probably going to be someone that has quite a bit of faith. If service in our serving. So if someone, if you think, well, they're good at serving people. They're good at getting things done. Well, I, I would hope the reason that you say that is because you see them serving. The proof is in the pudding, isn't it? The one who teaches, in his teaching. We have people, as you know, we just started Awana again last Wednesday night. There are people that have a gift of teaching from God. No offense if you don't have it. No offense if I don't have it. But if there's people who have it, let's put them to work, right? we got kids. They need to learn. The one who exhorts in his exhortation. That means the one who kind of propounds the word and says this is what we have and encourages people. You know there are people like that. You hear her or him speak and you feel roused up in your faith because they're here and they're doing that because God has put that in their hearts. The one who contributes in generosity. Now, some of that could be monetarily. You know, the tithe concept of 10% first of what you earn. Some people have that. Some people don't. You know, life has been in the way as far as money goes and you just can't. You're all the widow with two mites, the two little coins. Give it what you can. There might have been seasons that you couldn't give it all in that way. But how about the fact that you have gifts that you can share? No matter what's in your piggy bank, do you give generously of what God has gifted in you, in your heart, in your hands, in your mind, in your feet? And then the one who leads, it says, with zeal. If you are helping lead this body of Christ as a board member, as an elder, as a teacher, as someone who's organizing an event, you've got to be excited about it. This morning in our little class, Penelope kept saying with a cheerful heart. Do you have that? Do you have zeal for who you are and what you're doing as part of this church or wherever you are, your workplace, your school, your family? Do you have zeal that is contagious and people are like, oh, I want to follow him or I want to follow her because they are so exciting in what they do and what they believe. And finally it says, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Mercy is like God's mercy on us. We don't deserve it. But he's giving us his grace, his love, his justification, his sanctification, his salvation. Eventually the glorification because he has mercy on us. Do you have mercy on people? That gift of mercy might be someone that if there's a phone call that needs to be made, they're making it. If there's a hospital visit that needs to be made, they're making it. If there's a pile of wood that needs to be dropped off that house, they're doing it. If there's a grocery run that needs to be helped on with a ride, they're offering it. Do you have that? Because look at that picture. I put a silly picture on the front of the bullet and on the screen. It's a cross, but the heart around it is made of all different people's hands. One person's hand couldn't do that, could they? It's several right there. So are you different from the person sitting next to you? Yes. Is that okay? Yes. 
What happens when we have all the same talents or the same abilities? Harriet just made a yawning motion. Yeah, that would be pretty boring, wouldn't it? And it would be really robotic and unnecessary. We probably wouldn't get much done. For instance, if you are an index finger in the body of Christ, and you're really good at being a finger. Now, I didn't say you're really good at giving the finger. Okay, that's a different thing. Let me clarify for your notes. That's not what I'm talking about. If you're a great ability at being the finger, it might mean that you are good at pointing people in the right direction. But is that finger going to accomplish much when it's not attached to the rest of the body? If you're sitting by yourself at home or somewhere else and you're not part of the church, even though you are a really good leader, God has gifted you in leadership, but you're not in the church, how are you going to lead people spiritually from your couch? Or from your car? Or from wherever else you are other than in a church? If you are the index finger, that index finger needs to be attached to a hand and an arm and a shoulder and a body. And the head is Christ, isn't it? You've got to be part of it. But at the same time, do our different levels of talent or experience make one of us better than the other? And we were talking about 1 Corinthians, that group that met for six weeks before D.C. Part of the scripture there was about even the lesser known or lesser regarded parts of the body need to be honored. Not everybody is an index finger. You know, I picked a part that is very much important, leadership. But you can be something lesser and not as out in the open and still be vital in this church. You need to be honored for that. We must not honor ourselves more than we should, it says there in the scripture. God's plan, and by the way, as much as you and I might try to run our lives, he is in control. His plan is that we serve him, not that he serves us. Patting ourselves on the backs for what we do or having accolades for our selfish motives are not our God's way. They are human's way. And like I said earlier, we're in the habit of worshiping ourselves. And that can happen in a church, can't it? Should it happen in a church? Never. Now, I told you all uh, a little while ago, after we sang the Gloria Patri, I said we're going to get ready to go have the fellowship time and go hug somebody around the neck. Go smile at somebody. Go tap them on the shoulder because you might be the one person that somehow in God's infinite plan and his mercy, you are supposed to be the person that caught their eye because you might have made their day. Have you ever been that person? That you walked into a church and you were scared to death. And you thought, I, I don't know if I belong. I don't know if I fit. I don't know if they'll accept me. They might judge me. Some people in this room might know what I did. I mean, it wasn't good. But one person maybe touched your shoulder. One person just said hey and waved at you across the room. One person smiled when they caught your eye. And you felt, I'll give them a chance. i got to step on our own toes a little bit here. Recently, I had someone visit our church who Harriet and I have known for a long time, decades. And we were thrilled this person came by the church. Like, wow, great to see you. And... Um, we hope they come back. We hope they could be part of our church family. They don't live too far away. They're within reach. And we heard back from them after they visited our church and thanked, I think the, the message or text was more to Harriet than to me, but thanked her and me for welcoming them and bringing them in. But they said that within the church body themselves that day, they didn't feel very welcome. They said they were met by someone saying, hey, that's my seat, when they sat down, not knowing where they should sit. I mean, they haven't been in this church in years. I don't know the last time they were in this church. They were met by, that's my seat. They felt hounded by somebody that wanted to ask question after question after question about who they were. That's not everybody's thing, is it? Some of you, you want to talk a lot. And some of you are like, I'm scared. I don't want to talk a lot. And I know that's the truth. This person, the last thing they said about the way they were treated was that somebody didn't know who they were, they hadn't seen them in a long time, and they looked a lot different than they had before, and they really didn't make it sound good. 
They felt uh, very uncomfortable in the church. Now, I bring that up today because I think the timing of the scripture for being part of the body of Christ is that there are going to be people who come into our building, especially as we've started to grow more than we have in a long time, who might feel scared to death. And when Drennan had 20, 25 people here, it might not have been as scary. Last week we had 88 people, and I know a lot of people are not here today. We could have had that. We still had 69. Last year, remember, we averaged 62 in the pews total. And that was after an outbreak of, of five eyes from a lot of people. We still had more than we've ever had. We're ahead of that this year a little bit. That can be intimidating. But remember, what you say, and what you do, including me, can impact somebody being part of the body of Christ. Do we want anybody to miss out on God's plan of salvation? I hope not. Does that mean it's always going to happen at Drennan? Heavens, no. I'm glad not. I'm glad there's other churches out there. My goodness. I've had it laid on my heart that we talk about this for a while. And the timing for this today is perfect. I want to have you look right now. See if I can find mine. My church bulletin. It's got to be here somewhere. There it is. The back of it. Every week we have this vision. If you have one of these, look at it. I don't have it on the screen. We wrote this about 12 years ago with input from everybody in the church. It was a little church, so that's like 25 people. And the big words in caps I added two years ago to make it easy. Welcoming others. Are we welcoming? That's evangelizing, isn't it? Somebody comes in, you want to welcome them, get them in the church. Into a life in Christ. That's discipling. Helping them get into a life that is all about Jesus. And then finally, with open, loving arms. Loving on them. And sometimes that's loving on someone when you may not feel it. You may not think they deserve it. We might become judgmental. Anything. Because... I hate to tell you, we are all sinful human beings in this room. Me too. Paul says in some of his letters, he feels like he's the worst of all. And some days I feel like I'm the worst sinner in this church. Harriet and I hear everything and know everything about what's going on in the church. We don't know everything, but we, we know a lot about what's going on in the church. And sometimes we react poorly, or sometimes we get frustrated. And I know sometimes you do too. But we sin, we all sin. But I'm going to ask you today to take this thing home with you. That insert that you have in your bulletin. If you don't want it and think, eh, that's not for me. Don't throw it away. Put it back there where Troy sits with that little table. If you're like, I'm just not going to do that. And you don't have to. But take this home and think about it. This is a spiritual gift survey. What it is is a way to try to hone on what God has gifted you with. This is random questions about who you are as a person that when you tabulate them at the last two pages, it can give you a really accurate look at how God has gifted you. Is it foolproof? Nope. Harriet and I have done this probably four or five times during our marriage, and it always points to the same direction every time. Some of them you use with another person. This one you just use yourself. If you want to fill this out but you don't want to grade it or you don't want to tabulate it, Give it back to me and I'll do it for you. Do it yourself. You can keep it in your own Bible and not ever share it with anyone. Or if you want to share the results with me, I'd love to see it. All it's going to mean is I'll love to hear how this survey says God has gifted you. Because I think it's, it's pretty accurate how it works. So if you'd like to, fill that out. At least take it home. Or if you don't want to ever have it, don't want to take it home, don't throw it away. Because I think that would be a waste. Calling out the end of our service and the beginning of our board meeting to come together as a body of Christ, as it says in there, and that we have our hands together around the cross as that picture is. If this is the moment when you need to make a proclamation of your faith or your membership in the church or that you want to be baptized because you never were, this is the time to do it. The ladies have a song at the end. Great Redeemer, we adore thee. And they'll lead us in. And if you want to say anything during the last part of that last verse, that's the time to do it. Let's stand together the same.
Charlie's up here and wants to say a word or three about why he's up here. You know, he's already a member of this church. Shoot, he's on the board. What you got? I can preach a sermon. You want everybody to sit down? No. I was baptized when I was 12 years old. To me, it's probably was more ritualistic than sincere. A lot of things have happened, and I'm I'm broken. Certainly, haven't been the best. Father, husband, friend, example, co-worker. Made myself too hard and failed miserably. Is a testament. I'm going to start anew in that board one day. I can't die like this. This meat suit's going to go away someday. I got a legacy of friends and family that I love very much, including this whole church man. God bless you all. God bless you all. Troy has been baptized, as he said in the past. Does he have to be rebaptized? No. Of course not. He wants to because. Is as a testament to what he's been through and is going through and for the symbolism of what baptism is supposed to mean anyway. <clears throat> the thief on the cross was never baptized, was he? He met Jesus that day in paradise. But Jesus knew his heart and said, I'll see you in a minute. It'll, uh, it'll hold on to <clears throat> That's right. He just quoted it. So this is what we need to do. And if anybody ever, like I said, needs to make that proclamation of faith about baptism, about church membership, about... Anything you need to do, do it. You don't have to do it during the song. He did, because that's a bold move. A lot of time we have it happen at the church door. That's okay. Let's fan out and have our group, as we always do, to pray together. This prayer will also close our service and open our, open our board meeting. Thank you. 